Hello mathematicians, for today you are going to need your math notebook or some paper, you're going to need your math journal, and a pencil. For today's math lesson we're not going to do anything brand new, we're going to focus on reviewing what we learned yesterday because it was kind of a tricky lesson, and then we'll do a page of math boxes together in the math journal. If you don't want to keep watching the video when you do your math boxes, that's fine, but I will be reading all of the questions to you if you would like to follow along with me. First of all, let's open up our math notebooks to the next clean page and make sure you have a pencil available. Yesterday we learned about defining and non-defining attributes of shapes, right? You saw a little visual in the newsletter that I sent to your parents. Um, we drew shapes, right? So we drew um, rectangles. We made them a little bit different. We said that there are some things that always, always, always make rectangles rectangles. These things are things that rectangles will always have. Those are the defining attributes. There are some things that some rectangles will have, but it's not necessary to make that shape a rectangle. Things like the pattern or which direction it's facing or what size it is, those don't really matter for whether or not it's a rectangle. Those are non-defining attributes. Okay, so in your notebook on your clean page, I want you to write down a defining attribute for this circle. What is something that makes this circle a circle? Write it down in your notebook on the next clean page right now. What's something that makes this circle a circle? Okay, underneath that, please write down a non-defining attribute of this circle. So what does this have that doesn't matter for whether or not it's a circle? What is a non-defining attribute of this circle? What's something that could change from circle to circle? Okay, hopefully you said that a defining attribute of this circle is that it's round. All circles have to be perfectly round, right? They technically have to have the same distance from the center of the circle to the outside all the way around. Otherwise, it's kind of like an oval. So that's a defining attribute. Every single circle has to have that or it's not a circle. Look, I have another one here. That's still a circle or even the same size, doesn't matter if it's blue or if, or if it's pink or if it's big or small, it's still a circle because it's round and it's the same distance from the center to the outside all the way around. Maybe you said for a non-defining attribute of this circle is that it's yellow. It doesn't matter if a circle is yellow or blue, like we just said, or if it's big or small, it can still be a circle. What matters is that round shape. That's the defining attribute is the round shape. The non-defining attributes would be like the color and the size. Okay, let's do one more. Please write down, you can write it on the same page if you have space or a different page if you don't have space on that one. Please write down a defining attribute of this triangle. What makes it a triangle? Okay, now write down a non-defining attribute of this triangle. What does this triangle have that could change from triangle to triangle? Okay, hopefully you were able to come up with at least one defining and one non-defining attribute. 
like I told you yesterday, that concept or idea will be on our test when our test rolls around here. So it's important that you know what those words mean, defining and not defining, and then it's important that you know how to say what is a non-defining and what's a defining attribute of each shape. The test will say something like, name a defining attribute of a triangle, which you just did in your math notebook, but you'll have to be able to answer that question on the test. Okay, let's move on to math boxes. Again, if you want to do math boxes with me, then stick around and follow along with the video. Otherwise, go ahead and do them by yourself. We are on page 147 today, so that's math boxes 7-7. And number one says, circle the digit in the ones place. So it shows the number 50. Which one of those is in the ones place? We can make a chart that shows place value. So this is something we worked with a lot when we were at school in the classroom. We showed the hundreds, the tens, and the ones columns to show place value. If I was writing down the number 50 here, I would say in 50 there are five tens and zero ones. So I showed that. Five tens, zero ones going the wrong way here in the mirror. It says circle the digit in the ones place. In the ones place, I see a please circle that number, just the zero. And then it asks, what does the five mean? So what does that five mean? Is there just five in 50? Or are there five tens in 50? That's a completely different number, right? Five tens is a lot different than just five. I would much rather have five tens worth of candy than just five pieces of candy. So when it says, what does the five mean? Well, it means five tens. So you can write five tens, or you could just write 50, because the five means five tens, which is the same as 50. All right, number two says, what am I? You get to count the base 10 blocks. Remember, you're going to count by tens, and then you're going to count by ones. Write it down. Use longs and cubes to show this number another way. Ooh, so remember that we do this a lot in our math journal and on our test. We know what this number is, but now we have to show it again another way. Your job is to do that down here. They don't give you a ton of space, but you're going to use longs and cubes, lines and dots to show that number another way. Number three says, there are eight cups. There are five plates. How many more cups are there than plates? Blank cups. So here we're saying there are eight cups, five plates. One of those numbers is bigger. Which number is it? Eight is bigger. We want to know how many more cups are there than plates. We don't want to add those two numbers together. That's not what we're looking for here. We're not looking for a total of what those two numbers mean. We're looking for how many more. So there's a few different ways we've, know, we've learned how to solve this. One of those ways is to draw a picture. One of the ways we learned how to solve this in school is to draw a picture. So you would draw, I like to always use circles no matter what the object actually is because I just think they're easier. But it said there were eight and there were five. So we can draw eight and five. We can connect the ones that match and then put a box around the ones that are left over. So how many more cups are there than plates? Well, I can easily see from my the, the circles that are in that box how many more there are. There's three. 
Then it says to write a number model. So a number model would be a number sentence that goes along with this. Now, if I wrote eight plus five equals three, could that be true possibly? If I said eight plus five, let's find out. So we have eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh, eight plus five is not three, is it? That's not going to work. So I'm not gonna do an addition sentence here because I just figured out that eight plus five is not three. That doesn't make any sense at all. What if I did eight minus five? Do you think that would equal three? Let's count backwards. If we start at eight, we take away five. So seven, six, five, four, three. Oh, eight minus five equals three. That must be the number sentence that we're trying to go for here. And using a subtraction sentence to solve this problem is a great way to do it. If you are done drawing pictures, you're not interested in drawing a picture to solve that kind of problem anymore, using a subtraction problem is always a good idea for these problems that say how many or who has more, how many more. Okay, this says think addition to subtract. Remember how we did this? We had to think, um, like flip the problem around, turn it into an addition problem in order to subtract. So I'll do the first one as an example for you and then you're gonna do the rest on your own. It says 11 minus eight equals blank. Okay, I know the big number in that number sentence is 11. That's the dad number in the fact family. 11 is the big number, so that means if I'm using it in an addition sentence, it has to be the sum. So that looks like this. Eight plus something equals 11. See how I did? my example right here, eight plus something equals 11. Then I can um, uh, add in order to figure out what is that missing number. I can say, well, I have eight. I know I need to get to 11. So I'm gonna put up fingers until I get to 11. So I'll say eight, nine, 10, 11. Oh, how many fingers did I put up? It was three, the missing number must be three. So I can put that in the sentence that I wrote, and I can also put it on the example or on the, the problem that they actually have written there in the math box. Now remember, these other two problems, they put the dad number at the beginning. That's actually the beginning of the problem there, even though the line for the answer is over here. It doesn't matter what side of the problem you put the equal sign on with the little line, it doesn't matter. 14 is still the first number in that subtraction problem. It's still the big number. So when you go to write an addition sentence to go along with it, remember that number has to go at the end of the addition sentence. It's going to be the sum of the addition sentence. So that would look like this. If I flip it around, eight plus something equals 14. We're going to do the same thing with this 12. Put it at the end of the addition sentence. All right, go ahead and figure the rest of those out, and then we'll move on to number five. Number five says, label the name collection box. Oh, that must mean that down here when we see this name collection box, there's no name here. We have to figure that out. How do you know what the label Sorry, how do you know what to label the name collection box? Okay, so first of all, we have to think, what could the name of that be? Hmm, I must have to pick one of these number sentences and solve it in order to figure out what the name of the box could be. So I can pick any one of them. Maybe I wanna pick 20 minus five because I just think that will be easiest. 20 minus five, let's see, 20. I'm gonna let you figure it out. Now, how did you know what to label it? You're gonna write your answer in this blank spot here. I know how I knew how to label it. What did you do to figure out the number that goes in the corner? You can write a sentence that says, I knew how to label it because 
and then tell what you did to figure out that answer. If you need to pause the video here so you can get all of those words on your paper, then go ahead and do that. All right, after you're done with page 147, then you are done with our math lesson for today. Tomorrow, we're going to learn something totally new, and it's a really fun math lesson, so I look forward to teaching you again tomorrow. Bye!